Okay, everybody. Zoe's cooking herself some dinner. Um, she's actually throwing back some Munster right now. <laughs> but I'm going to try to talk over whatever all that noise the is. There is too. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what I've been reading lately. I have a wrap-up video to do that I should have done first, but I already got these books out, so I just figured I'd do it. So, um, actually, um, on my phone, I am i don't want to lose my spot, so I'm actually not going to show you. But um, I'm rereading um, Tales of Mos Eisley, or Tales from the Mos Eisley Cantina. Um, the Star Wars Legends book, because the whole Legends and canon are different now, um, which is a whole crazy thing in the world of Star Wars books. Actually, this happened in 2014, and I'm just late to the party. But, um, so I'm reading that again. It was like my favorite um, Star Wars paperback in the 90s. Um, and so I'm reading that, and then I'm going to read a couple of the other, like the Tales of the Bounty Hunters and Tales from Jabba's Palace. Um, I remember reading Tales from Jabba's Palace. Oh, Jesus Christ, Sorry. babe. But I don't remember reading um, Tales of the Bounty Hunter, but I think I had it. So if I had it, I'm sure I might have read it. I just don't remember anything from it. So I'm going to give it to Rita we again anyway. We were disgusted with the um, cantina. Oh my gosh. We rewatched um, the original trilogy on Disney Plus because basically I got Disney Plus so I could watch The Mandalorian and it's amazing. And we watched the trilogy on there. And let me tell you that I miss the old Dewbacks in A New Hope, first off. But that horrific, like, CGI concert in Jabba's Palace was the most revolting thing I've ever seen anywhere. Was it in Jabba's Palace? Yeah, was it no, it was in Jabba's Palace because it was uh, Max Weibo or whatever his name is. And then the chick with the big tube mouth. Oh, I she was the one that was singing and it's like, it doesn't even look like her. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Anyway, it was just awful disgusting. Anyway. It was awful. I was so pissed. And then... Um, I don't understand why they've done that when the original effects are but so But they good. did that, like, years ago. Yeah, We're yeah. just super late to the party. Because, like, I stopped watching Star Wars um, after Re um, Revenge of the Sith and all of the nastiness that happened with that... Which looks like a walk in the park compared to the nastiness going on with this trilogy. But anyway. Um, then they changed the ghost of Anakin Skywalker to... I want to say Holden Caulfield. What's his freaking name? Christian Bale. Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Jesus Christ, I went two different places there. And it, like, it doesn't even look... He doesn't look happy. He doesn't look anything. He's just sitting there like... oh. I'm a ghost. Uh, force ghost. And then they didn't even put the song in. The Beep up. Yeah, it's some crap song now. And I went to try to find that song and the I'm sure I could find it on eBay. But I found like the Star Wars trilogy um, soundtrack, and that soundtrack that they have out there is the soundtrack for the new crap that happened, and I don't want none of that crap. So anyway, um, I just that was a rabbit trail. I didn't think I was going to go down, but anyway. So um, now that we're talking about Star Wars, I'm reading Long Arm and the James County War. Um, log arm grapples with a ruthless cattleman and three beautiful women. <sighs> this is what I'm going to say about this. When you have 
your westerns and you have your dudes talking cowboy talk and everything's like rough and tumble and then you start using scientific words for orifices and stuff and sexy things parts. for sexy parts because if you didn't know long arm is an adult western which means it's a western with hardcore graphic sex in it and i mean maybe not hardcore no. maybe that's what i'm looking for maybe i need some hardcore adult western stuff yeah because when everything's like all aha and then they're like uh mound and mound. yeah and like just i don't know i'm not gonna say the words here you guys know what words i'm talking about but Pugis. they shouldn't they shouldn't be coming out of this guy's mouth look at him i mean i know that is a well manicured mustache but come on so um <clears throat> i'm digging it um, I'm not digging it as much as I... I'm not digging it as much as my loins would like me to, oh, I think. Oh, God. See? See what happens when a dude starts using words. Everything Boy. sounds weird and awkward. I don't know. So, I'm going to keep reading it. I got a bunch of these, and I got some Lone Star ones. And I also got a Slocum one over there. And I think the Slocum one, or Slocum, the series in general um i think i'm not sure if you know let me know but i think it's a little less than the long arm one when it comes to the rudy bits <clears throat> and if that's true then that'll probably go a little bit better but if you know of any um adult westerns that don't that aren't so scientific and I know that this is a, Tabor Evans is a house name and a bunch of dudes wrote under it. Um, there's some Harry Whittington books that I'm going to try to find um, that he wrote in the Long Arm series that I would like to check out. So, anyway. Then, Kitten with a Whip. Wade Miller, Gold Medal Faucet. Beautiful book that looks like it's never been read, but I'm sure it has. Um... I think I might have read this already, but I started reading it, and the thing that drives me crazy, like Sorry, right now, I've got Jesus Christ, dude, right now, it's not that bad, like looking at it, but I read in the morning a lot, and in the morning, my eyes don't want to cooperate with me, but look at, like, the font and the line spacing, these gold metal faucet books and all old paperbacks like this, they just tried to cram so many words onto a page. Now, you look at that one, and then you look at this long arm book. I mean, the line spacing on here you could drive a car through. So, this is a little easier to read. But um, I do have an ebook of this now. So, um, I think I'm going to save this book and make it not hurt. And um, read it on the ebook because I was trying to read this and I felt like my eyes were bleeding. I was like, really, like, and that just kills me about all these old paperbacks and me aging and making my eyes not work. Um, maybe it's the light. Probably. Maybe I need to be in a blazing sun. Probably need better lighting. Then I started also reading um, High Couch of Celestra by Janet Morris. Um, this book is weird, I will say. Not horribly weird. But um, the world that is in here is not confusing, but it's hard to grasp for me. And the thing that's kind of cool about it is that it's the narrator is kind of talking to you like you are aware of the culture but you need a refresher almost but not in a like really heavy handed plot dropping way like it, it all seems to fit <clears throat> um 
and I read the first chapter and haven't gone back to it yet, actually. So, um, yeah, but it's, let me see, uh, I'll read the back in case you don't remember me hauling this a little bit ago. Um, her sensuality was at the core of her world. Her quest was in galaxies beyond civilized stars. Somewhere deep in the heavens of a terribly distant tomorrow was the one man whose will conquered her own. The amazing and erotic adventures of the most beautiful courtesan in tomorrow's universe. Are you listening to something? Wow, that is loud. I've turned it down. Jeez. All right, so anyway, um, these and Tales of Most Isley, Tales from Most Isley Cantina, that's what I'm reading at the minute. Um, I have an Audible credit that I'm being very stingy with, and I can't find a book that I want to read. So if you guys have any recommendations for anything that's over 10 hours... Preferably 20 to 30 to 40 to 50. That would be amazing. Um, let me know down below. Um, and then I guess I will do my wrap up of what I've read in the next video. And you will see that one tomorrow. So I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.